Batteries and battery technology are very important. The 4680, once touted as the savior of the Tesla battery lineup, may be in trouble and it may not, but uh, we're going to be discussing that and some of the things. I'm joined today by Randy Kirk from Randy Kirk Videos. He does great work. Head on over there and check him out and we will see what's going on. Uh, but let's have a chat. I'm Brian. Welcome to Futuraza. So before we get started, I should mention next week, I'm hosting a panel uh, on Saturday in Muskegon with Jordan Giesegi from The Limiting Factor and Sandy Monroe. And there may also be one more special guest I'm waiting to hear back, uh, but maybe not. It might just be me and them two. Be enough. <laughs> that, would be a, that would be a pretty, a pretty amazing panel. <laughs> pretty amazing panel. I won't go into the whole thing, but there's too much exciting stuff to cover. So we're going to be talking about batteries. My question for the audience before we get started is, what should I ask Sandy and Jordan about the 4680? Uh, and really about anything, because we can cover all kinds of things. The big news from last week was that uh, Tesla has built their 50 millionth 4680 battery in uh, Giga, Texas. That's very exciting. And we're seeing that if you do the math, somebody said, well, yeah, but they take like a million cells each. So what's that? 50 cyber trucks? <laughs> okay, not quite, but it is many thousands of cyber trucks you could run the math to figure out how many it is they'd hit 10 million six months uh by let's see in the end of last year they were at 10 million so we can see that the pace is definitely picking up and it's going a whole lot faster in terms of the 4680 ramp and all that does it matter is it important is this does this battery need to be amazing is it going to save anything what are your thoughts on the 4680 randy go oh you you want me to have an opinion oh okay i do oh, oh. yes because randy kirk doesn't have opinions <laughs> all right so let's uh you know for those who may be new to the game uh, we we don't want to make any major assumptions the 4680 as you mentioned in your lead up was touted as being I don't know if your savior might have been a stretch, but but at least it was considered to be like a very, very big deal. It was going to be, it was revolutionizing the battery business. It was going to be a, a, a big moat. It was going to set Tesla apart from everybody else. And it was going to be something that they had a pretty aggressive plan in terms of ramping up. Well, like a couple of other things where Elon is brilliant and ahead of his time and uh, is doing the impossible. Uh, we are also seeing Elon being late. <laughs> so 50 million cells is a lovely thing to see. It's an indication that they are getting some things right. You can't make 50 million cells and that are you know usable cells that are going into cyber trucks unless you're doing something right. But at much lower numbers than anybody would have expected by this time. Now we have the previous uh, earnings call. Elon was asked about it and he says, oh, it doesn't really matter. You know, there's a lot of batteries in the world right now and we want to support our suppliers. We want to continue to buy a lot of batteries from them because they're, they're not doing well. He didn't say it that way. I'm very definitely uh, extrapolating on what he said. But basically, CATL and all these other guys, they've got so much extra excess capacity they really need us to buy a bunch of their stuff and so we've been buying their stuff so we're just kind of taking our time on the 4680 and all that really matters is that we make enough to satisfy the needs that we have for the cyber truck production line and we're way ahead on that and we've got extras sitting in stock and we're good so as long as we're doing that that's what we care about right now i didn't pretty much like that idea i didn't like i didn't don't i Sure, it's very lovely of you to support your suppliers. Um, I'm a person who has written in my books over the years that suppliers are more important than customers because there's lots of customers and only a few great suppliers. Um, so you really got to take care of your suppliers. There's no question about that. But to say that you're ramping, you're not ramping as fast on a domestically made in your own factory battery that's going to get all those all those dollars of, of subsidy from the U.S. government for everyone that you put in use. It was not the favorite answer I've ever gotten out of Elon. What did you think? <laughs> I agree with all that. 
first thing to remember is the 4680 is just the shape of the battery. It's not the chemistry. This particular 4680 was meant to have dry electro, dry cathode, some of their own lithium from Texas, which we will see soon enough. So the people saying 4680 wholesale is a failure. Go back to Chinese batteries. Well, we can't for a number of reasons, but the Chinese battery, I mean, there will be an LFP version of a 4680 because that's just the shape of it. In terms of getting uh, the volume up, it would be great if I believed that there were enough, but there's never enough uh, because if they could make more 4680s, if they could triple that production, that means that all of the Model Ys coming out of Texas would also be 4680. That would leave more 2170s to go in cars made in Fremont, which means more buyers would qualify for the incentives. It means that they could have, it would be a good thing. It would mean that they, if they had that, that, that many and the price was that good, they could use them for other applications as well. They might go back to using them in stationary storage, though I really think LFP is the winner there right. due to long cycle lives and, and the comfort with which those charge to 100% and discharge repeatedly forever. So those are all going to be factors to consider. I don't think it's where they want it to be. It does appear from people I've talked to in the last week that the charging curve, which was terrible on the Cybertruck, has already improved a bit. And a lot of that comes down to let's get 10,000 of them on the road, watch what the, happens with the battery health remotely, which we can do, and then determine how much we can unlock in terms of actual charging curve. So there's going to be some of that as well. I will say that the people who bought 4680 model Ys did not have amazing things to say about them. Uh, why would they? It, it is just a battery. And if at the end of the day, if it doesn't charge as well, that's the only part that matters. So they would need to definitely weigh their options there. So I'm not well, ready to discount 4680 entirely. No, so if I was the steel man, the opposite, you know, which of course when you're, you know, uh, in law school, that's what they teach you to do, right? They teach you to be able to take both sides of the case and cover it as beautifully as you possibly can. So let's just say that I'm Elon now and I'm trying to make my case. I want to make sure that you understand why I'm doing what I'm doing. Well, you could say, look, this is a brand new form factor. And we are also experimenting with all kinds of new chemistries, all kinds of new ways of, uh, of having the electrons inter, uh, interact with one another. We're, we're working on a lot of different stuff here. And since we didn't have an absolutely striking need to move fast, it made a lot of sense to spend more time experimenting both in Free, well, Fremont, Cato Road, I guess they say. Yes. Uh, the Cato Road facility in our experimental fact, we could do more time experimenting there. We could do more time experimenting on the lines in terms of how to get them really maxed in terms of their uh, output in, in terms of their uh, reducing the failure rates and whatnot. Um, so we could, because we had some flexibility. Now that was something that he kind of hinted at I want to say it was a couple of earnings calls a day, or it might have just been something he said on X. But he did say, you know, we did have X, we did feel like we had time. So we have been doing more experimentation in order to get things right. Moreover, you could also say we've got, as you said, the dry cathode facility being finished up. P potentially, people have talked about, well, it would be so much better if that was also a part of the finished product going out the door. So maybe there's some coordination on that timing. So those would be the ways I'd steel man it. Did I do a good job? I think you did a great okay. job, Randy. I will get, I will mail you a gold star uh, for that wonderful performance. For my refrigerator. Yeah. Right next to my right right next to my refrigerator bag. Oh, you can't see it. Can't my see uh, it. my uh, cyber truck magnet. Yeah. Well what's fun is Ryan, uh, Lightning Ryan Fulcher, who let me drive his Cybertruck, his Cyber Beast. There will be a video about that coming uh, fairly soon, uh, but I have quite a backlog to help cover me while I'm on the road. That In that video, we get to see his collection of magnets that he keeps all over the car. So on the back, he took silly letters and crooked wrote Cybertruck. Uh, that's kind of fun. And then, yeah, and there's little magnet 
people on the car. Oh yeah, you should send them one of those. Yeah, I should send them one of those. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, I've still got one. I could probably just give it to him. But yeah, yeah either way. Uh, so that way, he's got a Cybertruck bottle opener logo of a Cybertruck. Yeah, <laughs> Ryan, if you're watching, remind me to do that because I have one. You can you can pick it up. Uh, on July 3rd, when everyone comes to Longview to celebrate my belated birthday. Your belated birthday party. Yes, everybody will be there. Everyone will be there because my family really dropped the ball on it. But uh, on the actual birthday. Story. But boy, is that a story. I tell you what. Uh, guys, in the comments, what did we miss? What do we misunderstand? Uh, do me a favor, if as you could, and maybe head over uh, to the old Randy Kirk channel there. See what he's up to. Uh, who knows? It might even be... Uh, He's got some really great guests that he manages to get on on a regular basis. Uh, Brian Wang is one of them. Brian White is the other. I don't know if I trust that guy, though. Everybody else, you know, like, subscribe, do the usual, and stay tuned. Stay juicy, and I cannot wait to hear from you clever robots on the road.